All right now, ladies and gents, it should be quite fun. It should be a bloody good time. I hope you have a joint. I hope you have a cup of tea. And, and you're ready to come along with me. <clears throat> so I watched a little bit of this. Uh, it immediately <laughs> stirred up some things. Um, because I have, um, a lot of similar life experiences that you all have. Uh, no coincidences here. I feel like this is why we connect. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why we connect, uh, so, so deeply is because we have so many, uh, similar experiences, similar happenings and occurrences, and we are kind of just, the more we share, <laughs> The more we learn, the more we gain different pieces and perspectives upon the things that we have experienced. We are able to share the things that we have experienced and that helps other people gain new insights as well. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see where we go with this. Um, how deep we go with it. Because this is going to get get into like dream world stuff. Uh, dream time. Dreamy dreamland time. And um, my experiences are, are very similar to the Skylarks. This is who we're going to be listening to. Shout out to, <laughs> to the Skylarks. Shout out to all you fucking amazing people. Uh, shout out to Angie, a very beautiful person. Shout out to the Sky Hoppy. Shout out to the Catalyst Man, Zen Atman. Shout out to the Mayan, Apadani. Shout out to the Zigzags. Shout out to Juni. Of course. Shout out to Activation Codes. Because, like, it's like we're the same fucking person, right? <laughs> it's, it's very bizarre. But, uh... I'm also interested in, in, uh... in knowing how deep the Skylark has went with the dream landscape. Um... How many lucid dreams she's had. And what not. I tend to, at this point, allow a lot of the stuff to happen in, in my dreams. And not, not become super lucid to where I start to control uh, outcomes and scenarios. But uh, it, it's a lot like love, right? Um, you can't really truly wrap your mind around love. Like, you're just... You feel it, and you're along for the ride. And all you can really do is embrace it, um, engage it, and be honest with it. Be true in the love. So this is kind of how I let dreams happen. I let the love and the dream uh, guide me to, to wherever it needs to guide me and show me. Because... Even even though like all this crazy shit happens within our dreams, um, and it's not necessarily solely just we're working we're working shit out that we you know have been through in, in our quote unquote waking life. Because there's there's so much going on. Like the, the dream world is the shaman world. The dream world is the subtle layers of, of what's really going on in, in testing you, seeing you, pushing you, but also pulling you in, see, seeing where you're at. This is one of the many purposes of, of dreaming. It's kind of like you are testing yourself, or you could say 
the all that is is giving you scenarios. But not just uh, scenarios. Uh, the thing, the thing about dreams is we got to realize that it's it's all about our intent. It's all about our emotional engagement. So what you're feeling with these things, that's what. Especially whenever you keep a dream journal, like and you read back about about the dream and that you had. And all these feelings and emotions well up again, and you're just you're taken back into the dream world. What really allows you to do this seamlessly is being in tune with your emotions and your inner state. Having more, let's say, control. It's a uh, discipline with with certain avenues and aspects of beingness. So whenever I have certain dreams, um, very much, very often, if they're vivid, it depends on the recall. Uh, they they stick with me for for a good time because there's an integration <laughs> integration that needs to be done, um, emotional integration, uh, heartfelt integration. But a lot of times where we get caught up is we're caught up in the image a little bit much with the dreams, and so we. You're kind of distracted from from the message, which is the feeling, which is the precursor to the healing. So the topic today that we are discussing are... Entities, beings, from another dimension, I guess you could say. That and in the genie fashion, we're going to have to pause this a couple times here. Entities from another dimension. Another density. Aspects of ourselves reaching out to us, grabbing hold of us, of our emotions, reminding us of what's inside of us. We're also going to get into a little bit deeper stuff where uh, you can actually have entity, entities or, or beings. Uh, anyone can do this, to be honest. Uh, you can project yourself out there and quote unquote haunt someone. Uh, they don't necessarily need to be sleeping either. You can do this in their waking life and, and terrorize them if you so choose. But once you get to the point where you realize that you're only terrorizing yourself, then what the fuck are you doing? But there are still quite a few people out here. Uh, that number is diminishing. Uh, quite a bit, but there's still quite a few people who are caught up in the rat race, in the trap, and uh, they're using their their talents, as I like to call them for uh, manipulation and in a way that's ultimately only tearing themselves down. So like uh, astral projection, uh, remote viewing, that's 
there's people that do that for for you could say their job and they do that for certain aspects and areas and avenues and agendas and energies and it's hard to come out of that once you have been uh, indoctrinated enough and involved enough within a certain cycle, a certain pattern, a certain loop program it's hard to find yourself out a way out of that, a pathway, an avenue towards freedom but no matter what kind of dark crap that you're involved in feel that's, that's all you gotta do just, just fucking feel and then you'll reconnect with the love you'll reconnect with the all that is and then the pathways will open up to you take them, feel them be brave enough to feel that deeply So, back in 2016, when I was doing some major body cleansing, my kids were at their dad's and there was nobody in the house but me. And I was sleeping on my couch because that's the only bed I had is my couch. And I was curled up. And I was so tired and thankful that everybody was far away so I could have some me time. And I cleaned up my house, took a bath, and I fell into such a deep sleep. And I, in my sleep, I do not know where I go. But I. Mm -hmm. She knows. <laughs> she knows more than she's leading on. I do feel. I think I think with clarity it's uh she allows herself to to, to go wherever she wherever she goes. And this is just uh, this is this is what is pulling us out of uh, the corruption, uh, because if you if you if you even had a little fucking bit of gnosis about how the control structure worked, about how certain individuals are casting certain spells and uh, areas of influence and webs weaving their influence around the minds of quote unquote the masses uh, it's, it's some bleak shit but how we're finding our way out of this is through the spontaneity of inspiration sporadic inspiration in the moment with love's inspiration with <laughs> allowing <laughs> allowing our hearts to feel again and to be inspired in the moment and once that happens you don't know what's going to happen it's a free flow you just allow it and whatever happens happens and this is something that this kind of level of uh, control cannot touch. And this is what they fear the most. Is this spontaneity of creative flow. And this is what has outdone them, ultimately. 
whenever we are a ways in the future and we are able to look back with clarity um, at what ultimately changed the tides and the cycles that kept repeating, this is going to be what it was. A realization of the cultivation that is needed within to feel again, to heal not only ourselves, but to heal all aspects of the realms within and without, to reintegrate and remember our pure positions, our purposes that we create and we choose. Every time that I wake up, I feel like, oh, I'm still here. Like, like being here has been such a fucking burden. But I'm here. And I've always felt like I should not be here. <laughs> I've always known that. Because every single time I wake up, I feel like I'm in a nightmare. That's and this is part of the process whenever we are, quote unquote, waking up, whenever we are kind of reconnecting the reality of the dream world, the reality of the subtle world, this connecting with the sub, the subconscious, the subways, the sub layers, the sub levels, and bringing them up to the conscious awareness levels. And whenever we are exploring the avenues and aspects of the mind, whenever we are in the dream world, we have a lot more freedom in that we have a lot more movement. Uh, there's a lot more fluidity. And then, and then oftentimes we feel like we come back into the waking life and uh, we put on this meat suit again. If you want to call it that. And, uh, or it feels like a lead suit. It, it feels like we are weighed down. We're back into this heaviness. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can learn from both aspects of beingness. We can integrate them. We can bring that fluidity and that freedom within the dream time into this time. And this is what many of us are doing now. What I felt like all my life, like I was in a nightmare that I did not belong in. But <clears throat> when I wake, I know I'm being pulled from something. And in 2016, as I was in what people would, I guess you would call dream state, I felt the place that I was at was very real. I could feel the sand and the cold of the night underneath my feet. I could feel the wetness of the wind because of the sea crashing the crags on the rocks. I could see a very, a very, very bright full moon. And it was so passionately intense. First off, before we go into what she describes, I'm going to go ahead and say I, I've had this same experience many, many a time with uh, many certain beings. And we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, 
there are vivid dreams, there are lucid dreams, and you can you can get so lucid within a dream that you you start to smell and sense and and feel your surroundings within the dream and and it feels very real and you can also do this with astral projection and it can get a little confusing uh, with, with the two and which one you are actually doing which one you're actually engaging because they both feel just as real and oftentimes actually in a very lucid and intense emotionally passionate dream state that will feel very very much more real than the waking life especially whenever you get into modes where you can engage intense state of heightenedness and not allow your body to wake up because of that be triggered to to come back into the body then you can get into some really cool dream time training scenarios as in <laughs> training certain aspects and areas of not just the body but the mind and you will wake up and find that your body has felt the things that you have went through it has the cells in your body have listened to this. Even though it's just, you know, quote unquote dream time stuff, the cells in your body still retain that memory. You can train your ass off in the dream world and wake up and your body is going to remember this. <laughs> and it's very, very magical to uh, experience and to engage and to realize that you have access to this all you need is a little bit of focus patience dedication that's it I remember running out to see and this creature that was half man and half wolf was taking me out there and I wasn't afraid of him see a part of why I wanted to make this video is uh, whenever people talk about like intense emotional uh, powerful dream time uh, experiences oftentimes It reminds me of uh, powerful experiences that I've, that I've had. So this is kind of why I wanted to make this, to share some of my experiences. In dream time, um, out of dream time, um, con con uh, melding in between dream time and uh, waking life. I was like, I wanted him. I wanted that creature. And we like made passionate love on this beautiful, beautiful full moon of the night. Danny, you such a freak. No. I, I've been, I've had many of those experiences, um, for me, it's, beings that, of course, it's going to depend upon your, you know, if you're a male or a female, and, uh, funny enough, I have always likened myself to a lichen or a werewolf energy more so than a vampire even though I've been both too many times to
to repeat. But the werewolf, I, I, it's more, not just animalistic, but it's more natural. Uh, I feel more werewolf vibes, especially when I'm out uh, by myself in nature on the full moon. And I feel all my hairs on my skin rise with the, as they're electrified. With inspiration and an engagement of gnosis. But yeah, for me, uh, it's been more like nymph type uh, figures. Um, we'll get into it here in just a second. Um, water-like because I am uh, a fire sign uh, so much more mermaid-like uh, but then also I I've been to the extreme of uh, engaging certain uh, you, you could say demons uh, you could say uh, egregors even And when this beast man was kissing me, when I was kissing me, it was a it was a a man. But when I saw, it was a wolf. But when I touched, it was a man body, and it was so crazy to me. It was like really. Yeah, and that's gonna that's gonna come in, into like you know the symbology and uh, the not being like so caught up. And this is oftentimes you know what what the issue is with uh, dreams and, and realizing what dreams mean is that either you know we we take the word of what people are telling us what a symbology of shit is, but, but then. Uh, we're disconnected from the emotional aspect or we're so caught up in the emotional aspect of the felt experience of the dream that we're unable to see the, the symbology that it's trying to be shown to us. So we have to find this little meeting point. We have to meet it in the middle and find that bridge. Not losing or, or taking away from, from any aspect but just balancing. It's a balancing act. So whenever animals are involved uh, with your dreams, it's look up what that animal is, look look up, feel what that animal means to you. But it, it ultimately it's going to be the mother trying to share a certain thing, a certain certain message with you. Mother Nature is trying to reach you and tell you something. Remind you of something. And as I was waking from that beautiful dream, right before I did, the wolf bit my neck, and it it was like it sent me back here. It sent me back to here, and it was so fucking passionate that. Yeah, and then this goes into the thing where, you know, uh, certain heightened states within the dream time will bring you back into the, uh, into the body. Uh, you, you can get, uh, very adept into not picking up whenever the pull is happening. To where you're going back in the body and not going back. So you wouldn't have uh, some, some very immense, intense, heightened states in the dream time.
and, and remain in dream time. And this dream time, though, it's it's also multi-layered, multi-leveled because you can access dream time in your waking life whenever you, whenever you wish. You can will it. You can go into that state and mode whenever you desire. So the more you cultivate an awareness within the dream time, you can access it. You can engage it. You can utilize it for certain avenues and aspects and awarenesses of your life to gain insights into things, into people, into uh, layers, of deeper layers, more subtle layers of reality. Because all we're working with here is one thing, one reality, but we have all these access points of how we can engage it. But we have not been privy to these things because of our indoctrination. And unless you come about someone or you are brought up in a system where you are taught these things, then you kind of just have to figure it out on your own or trust uh, in a process where you go with the flow of the river of love and you will find your way, which is not fucking easy whenever you are born into this fucking world of traumas and dramas and just fucking bullshit. It's not always easy to remember the love within whenever you look outside of you and it's just, oh, more fucking bullshit. More people just fucking playing the game. Deflecting and not realizing what's inside. When I was on my couch coming out from that sleep, that I felt him still with me. So yeah, uh, basically, yeah, I've had those experiences, um, what she's going to say is, uh, yeah, she, she was still having all those feelings and, and everything, um, And that just brought back like uh, so many memories for me. So in, in one memory, I um, I was at a location with a friend, and I wanted to be in a place where I could, I could just kind of meditate and know that I'm in a safe space, <laughs> in a place where I'm not going to be disturbed. Essentially, because whenever you're entering these deep shamanic uh, trance states, you want to try to make sure that you, you can be in a place where you're not going to be disturbed by uh, the, the bullshit fucking people or, or whatever. So, I was in this person's apartment and uh, I ingested several different uh, things uh, to, to to ignite and to access a certain place inside me. So, uh, what happened with my experience? Um, I will say that the chemicals utilized were MDMA, marijuana. And then all the, you know, everything that's already inside of you, which is everything. So I utilized those things in an intense meditation to uh, blast open 
my heart and my mind's eye and uh, I was able to see um, come into contact with the, the the designer the painter that was painting my life that was designing it's very much like uh, The, the last Airbender series, um, whenever he comes into contact with like his uh, his higher self, it, it felt very much like that. And uh, when I was in this experience, I was exuding a massive amount of uh, energy around me. An energetic field of bliss. So uh, the person's apartment that I was in, um, I gave them a pill, and they they took that. They felt something from it, but what happened was that they entered into a meditative state as well. Whenever I went into my heightened state, they. Uh, had like an energetic intercourse with uh, an essence that they thought was me. It was just a tiny little aspect of what I was tapping into. But uh, whenever you're tapping into like intense states of beingness and, and modes of awareness, you have to be aware of the effect that it's going to have on people, on certain people, certain individuals. Especially uh, realizing how most people are lacking love. So most people are going to just cling to it and then also attach their uh, mentalities to it. So uh, if they have to attach sex to that kind of uh, intense blissful state, then that's what's going to happen. So you have to be able to ground it down and ground yourself, ground all these energies so that you can truly get to the healing and not just cut, get caught up into the, uh, the blissful feelings. Like you have to ground the bliss down. And that he was inside me. And I was having the, a fucking major orgasm. And when I came out of my orgasm, I was, I was here. And I was like, what the fuck was that all about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I, I, yeah. So... We've all had those dreams where before those things happen. How many of you have had those dreams where you have an intense orgasm and you don't wake up? <laughs> huh? Seriously, though. Because I've never heard of anyone <laughs> not waking up from it. But, but you can do that as, as you will find and realize. You can do anything and everything. And certain modes and methods and modalities of being and certain aspects and awarenesses and subtleties. So, why would you want to wake up whenever you can just have an orgasm for eternity, right? Well, because if you don't wake up, then your body will still be in this realm and eventually not get any nourishment and, and die. And then you will <laughs> be sitting there still having an orgasm until you realize that, oh shit, I don't have any kind of grounding to this reality anymore. So you eventually drift off until 
you are born again. But also, uh, and this is why uh, so many, so many different layers and levels of corruption seek to uh, corrupt me and get inside me is because of the thing that I offer them. So, uh, some of my most intense dreams where I'm, I'm having um, a, a sexual encounter, um, one of my most vivid ones was with a a uh, very high level demon to where she she wasn't expecting much she was expecting you know she she was coming at it from a place of oh we'll see what we can get out of this one like which is how they do you can say vampires or demons or whatever uh, yeah we're not gonna get into the whole fucking thing about how a person can become this but Anyways, uh, I was being engaged in the subtler realms, or if you want to call it dream time, and, uh, every time that this happens, the, uh, that kind of energy realizes what they're touching upon, and that they can't get enough of it, and that it transforms them. So my experience was um, intense bliss. I, I did not allow myself to wake up back into the body. I stayed there until that entity, if you want to call it that, realized what was going on, realized that uh, what it had lost by by going the route that it had went in life. So it was reminded of that. It wanted to stay attached to that. And that's also a thing whenever, you know, we start to heal ourselves and heal others or, and whatnot. Like, we have to realize the attachments that happen. And that it's not a good or bad or indifferent thing. It's just a thing that happens. To see it for what it is. Realize the true causalities. So this, this uh, you could say succubus. It had the time of its life with me, and ultimately, it was reminded of what was inside of it, what it had ignored. So, uh, this essence, like, approached me as in, like, you know, I'll get whatever I can out of this, I'll suck it dry, and then, you know, I'll consume it. But instead, what happened was... just a, uh, a resurrection, an anastasis of beingness. And this is, this is what I... offer the things inside people that... They are afraid to touch upon. And with, 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 you know, people who are so very ignorant, uh, and aloof, uh, I will only go so far. I, I will not go past a certain point until they show me that they are ready for it. But with energies that have already, you know, been corrupted, uh, I welcome them on full force for transformation. 
And if they are brave enough to actually engage me, then they are transformed. But most shy away. Okay, so yeah, that's it for now. Uh, yeah, basically, just realize what you are. Realize the power that you have over your own reality, over choosing your gateways and your portals and your access points of what to engage, how to engage. Do what you need to do to get real again. Whatever whatever form that needs to manifest in, just fucking do it. Feel into it. Listen to that. You may seem like you're you're going in a place where it's uncharted territory and you don't know what the fuck to expect, but if you're feeling your way through the process, there's no, there's nothing that, you're going to find your way back to yourself, you're going to find your way back to the source. Sometimes we have to allow ourselves to become lost so that we can truly find ourselves. And you will experience that if you ever you know, go trekking about in the woods. And you know where the fuck you're at all of a sudden. But then all of a sudden it's pure magic. Allow that magic to reach you, to touch you, listen to it, engage it. Allow it to transform your perceptions of the world within and without. Peace.